And now it's time for Dreamboy 54's My Little Pony Make Your Mark Chapter 5 Reviews. Today's review Chapter 5, Episode 1 Cutie Blossom Bash. Hey everyone, this is Trainboy54, and this is my first review of My Little Pony Make Your Mark Chapter 5. Today we're going to be reviewing My Little Pony Make Your Mark Chapter 5, Episode 1, Cutie Blossom Bash. At the beginning of the episode, the main five ponies, Sunny Star Scout, Izzy Moonbow, Hitch Trailblazer, Zip Storm, and Pip Petals, including Misty, are traveling to Zephyr Heights in the Maerstream for the annual Equestria Cutie Blossom Bash, a ceremony and celebration thrown for ponies who received their cutie marks over the past year. Wow! That must be a special sort of occasion for them. Misty, having received her cutie mark in the previous episode, which... Wah. Well, I can't say what the title is right now, because I don't want to give that away. Is nervous about taking part. So her friends share their own cutie mark stories to get her mind off things. Sunny Star Scout got her cutie mark when she opened a lemonade stand as a filly, and resolved an argument between two ponies who fought over the last cup of lemonade. Wow! Sunny Star Scout's cutie mark story was amazing! Zipstorm got her cutie mark when, while trying to figure out how Pegasi could fly again before Magic returned to Equestria, she impressed a crowd of Pegasi with her Park Hour skills. Well, that was kind of short, but good. Pet Petals got her cutie mark when, immediately after Zip got hers, she was inspired to share her singing talent for the first time. Aw, that was 5 to 10% cute. Not a bad story, though. Hitch Trailblazer got his cutie mark when, while playing on the beach with some other cults, he allowed a filly to join their game after other cults refused. Well, that was much shorter than Zip's story. And finally, Izzy Moonbow got her cutie mark when she took a pile of junk in the middle of Bridalwood and recycled it into something new, discovering the joy of unicycling for the first time. Well, Izzy's story was a bit longer than Sunny Star Scout's story. Out of all the five ponies' cutie mark stories, I think I like Sunny Star Scout's cutie mark story better. After hearing their stories, Misty is still nervous about participating in a big public ceremony in front of a crowd of hundreds. But she decides to bear through it for the sake of her friends. Uh, Misty, don't you think you should at least tell Sunny and the others about how you feel? That would help a bit of a situation like this out. The main six are greeted by Queen Haven when they arrive to Zephyr Heights. Well, royal greetings to you, Queen Haven. Oh, please, Mr. 54, call me Your Majesty Queen Haven. Oh, yes. <clears throat> royal greetings to you, Your Majesty Queen Haven. I need to get my royal greetings right. To prepare Misty for her independent ceremony, her friends give her a makeover, including dyeing her mane a new color. Whoa! Well, Misty's mane was purple and blue. Now her mane is purple, magenta, and red all at once. Wow. She looks not bad, actually. However, Misty is anxious about what evil plans Opaline is coming up with in her absence, unaware that Opaline's only current concern is missing a hairbrush. Well, it's a good thing Cloudpuff stayed behind and had to make Misty tell the truth. 
she also feels awkward over the fact that since most ponies get their cutie marks when they are young, she will be the oldest pony taking part in the ceremony. Oh, Misty, how hard or bad can it be to take part in the ceremony? Especially with the pipsqueaks involved. <laughs> During the ceremonial Blossom Bash dinner, the participants are asked to introduce themselves and say what they believe their new cutie marks represent. Well, out of the participants, Misty was the first to start instead of some pony else. However, Misty is unsure of what her cutie mark, a butterfly, means, making her feel even more like an outsider. I knew Misty should have told Sunny Star Scout and the others about how she feels from the very start. At least Seashell got to tell us about her cutie mark. The next day, the main Blossom Bash ceremony begins, with the participants being parade in front of a large crowd while wearing banners bearing their new cutie marks. Wow! That must have been a lot of work for every pony preparing for the Blossom Bash ceremony. Overwhelmed by the ceremony, Misty shuts the palace doors and confesses to her friends that she is too nervous to stand in front of a large crowd and uncomfortable with being made a big deal of. Well, now she's telling them how she feels. I'm a little disappointed in you, Misty. She fears her friends are disappointed in her, that she ruined the ceremony because of this. But her friends assure her that she has not ruined anything and apologize for pursuing her into such an uncomfortable situation. They offer to help her celebrate her cuny mark in another way. Well, whatever kind of another way they have in mind, it will at least make Misty feel better. As the rest of the Blossom Bash participants take part in the public parade, Misty's friends arrange for a smaller, private ceremony for her in the Royal Palace Garden. Well, I may have missed almost most of the parade, but at least I got to see Seashell there. A smaller, private ceremony for Misty in the garden? Okay, I'm starting to getting to know this now. Pip donates one of her personal tree saplings for Misty to plant in the garden and nurture. Misty happily approves of this kind of ceremony for her cutie mark. And upon planting and sapling, she and her friends sing the song, It All Takes Time. As the main six sing, the magic shared between them causes Misty's sapling to grow rapidly into a large tree with blue leaves. Wow! What a moment in this episode! The song was great! And Misty was sort of singing at the end of the song? Now she and the main five grew this amazing tree with beautiful blue butterflies! With this, Misty realizes what her butterfly cutie mark represents. Her ability to change and shape her own destiny. That's amazing! I'm happy for Misty now! She also resolves to help finally defeat Opaline by pretending to still be loyal to her and acting as a double agent for her friends. Are you serious? What kind of plan is that? Operation doing two things at once? Where have the years gone? First Oswald, the blue octopus from Oswald? Then Franklin the turtle? Then Thomas? Take back to Thomas's crazy day, for instance. And now, you, Misty? Where's Dr. Heinz's Doofenshmirtz's Duplic-8-inator when you need it? 
While Misty's friends are concerned about the risks involved with such a plan, they support Misty's decision. Oh, all right. We'll give it a shot. But if it fails, who knows what will happen in the end of Chapter 5 of My Little Pony Make Your Mark. Sometime later, Misty returns to Opaline's castle, keeping her cutie mark concealed with makeup. Well, Misty forgot a couple of other things. Her mane and the flower pin that she had on her head. Well, that was an episode, but there were other things that I didn't point out. Sparky, the baby dragon, is with Hitch's grandma. That's so adorable. Queen Haven using Cloud Puff for a tissue? Ew. Gertrude, Opaline's main brush? Seriously? What is with that evil alicorn? And overall, the lesson is that it's always better to be honest and tell the truth. So, Cutie Blossom Bash was a good episode. A great way to kick off Chapter 5 of My Little Pony Make Your Mark. And my final score for that? I'll have to give it 4 out of 5 stars. Thanks for listening to my My Little Pony Make Your Mark Chapter 5 review on Episode 1, Cutie Blossom Bash. This is Trainboy54 saying... Stay tuned for the next episode coming soon to this review. Take care to you all. May the friendship of ponies be with you forever and evermore.